Okay. Right. Uh, so, claims transformation, positioning for the future. So, I'm going to be doing some things here which might be involve some uh, predictions. And as Arthur C. Clarke said, predictions are very difficult, especially about the future. Um, now, a word on credentials, where we're coming from, a little bit about what better, outclaim, out, better claims outcomes might be and what it includes. Um, and then there's, there's, there's lots of initiatives uh, and business drivers that are pushing uh, the change and the evolution of claims throughout the world. But one thing is driving the evolution of human behaviour more than anything else, and that's the digital paradigm. And I'm going to touch on that, talk something about there. And then I'm going to present you with a proposition that's both a challenge and potentially food for thought. That's the claims ecosystem, drawn from experience in other fields of insurance that we think will find its way into this one. So who are we? Finios is a claim software company. We manufacture uh, claim software, that's all we do. Uh, we're based all over the world. We're based in Ireland, we're, we're a European company. We have uh, business all over the world in the Northern Southern Hemisphere, lots of large government operations as well. And we cover the whole range of lines of business. That's really what I'm gonna say about that. The, the point I'm making here is that our experience is drawn from a very wide set of, of background. Different insurance sectors all move at different speeds. They all adopt innovation at different times. But overall, over time, there is a convergence. What's innovation in one sector eventually becomes ubiquitous. And I want you to bear that in mind as we're going through some of these things here. Okay, so what do we mean by better claims outcomes? Well, we've already touched on some, some of these things and, and uh, you're seeing these things, but in terms of all that that's going on, what makes a good claims outcome? Well, for the underwriter, of course, it's settling valid claims quickly, hopefully quickly and accurately. I was reminded when Rob was just mentioning something there that uh, I heard this statistic, I've not been able to validate it, uh, but when the Titanic went down, all insurance claims were settled uh, within a week. Uh, which is an interesting thing to contemplate that a hundred years later we're taking several years for certain things and certainly several months to get things through. So for the underwriter it's certainly settling things quickly but that's not the only thing. Uh, you want to avoid unnecessary expenses, you want to have sound financial management so you know what's going on and there's all sorts of things we could concentrate on here but what I'm going to focus on is that providing a superior service because that's one of the things that helps you compete and as we said there are lots of um, other global markets that want to come in here and eat your lunch so how are you going to compete with them? Well by providing a superior service is certainly one of the ways of doing that. And what about the customers? Now it's not just the, from the insurer's perspective, a better claims outcome, what about from the customers? Well, getting paid, getting paid in full, and getting paid quickly is uh, certainly important. But again, that's not the only thing. Uh, the more complex the claim, the more advice you want, the more help. Insurers are in a position to provide all sorts of expert advice, not just general advice about how to get through the claims. Brokers can do a lot of that work. But care and assistance, providing proper financial support so there are no cash flow problems. Um, getting the right information, getting the business back on track, minimising business disruption. And of course certainty. There are all sorts of things involved in here. My point here is that there are all kinds of people, there are multiple parties who are involved in this process. They all benefit from better claims outcome and therefore they should all be able to assist in the best way they can in making sure that that better claims outcome actually happens. So let's look at the digital paradigm. Now I've always wanted to use the word paradigm in a presentation uh, but this time it's actually meaningful because there really has been a paradigm shift in the way that technology is used throughout the world. So what is a system in 2012? People's experience of internet systems has changed radically. Systems have become invisible. I mean, some people, uh, um, um, software.com, salesforce.com, have this no software logo. You know, this isn't about software. This is about service. This is about helping people, about interaction. The technology should be invisible. And one thing you get as a consumer when you're using these kind of things is that there is no real difference between the internal and the external. If you phone up a help desk because you're stuck on one of these systems, you don't really get a sense that the help person inside the company has access to more or different information to what you do. The systems are completely open. You know, people use the same kind of thing. This isn't about providing a front end to a back office system in the old way of doing things, where you provide a little window through which outsiders can get access to a very, very small part of all the back office processes. The back office processes are the front office processes. Everything is used by everybody in these situations. It's all about collaboration. 
Now, the digital world will fundamentally influence, or already has done, but it's going to have probably an even bigger impact in the years to come, the way in which insurance is sold, managed and certainly claimed for. And this, in this instance, it's consumerism that's leading the way. Now, it's a truism to say that most individuals have access to far greater computer power at home than they do at the office. Now, go back five years, eight years, certainly ten years, that certainly was not the case. Corporations were the place that had big mainframe computers, big computing power and so on. Now, you've got more access to greater computing power at home. This is a complete transformation. And that means that instead of uh, the industry and corporations leading the way computing power is used, people are. So there's some interesting statistics here. How long did it take various technologies to be adopted by people? Well, um, to reach 50 million users. Well, radio took 38 years. Um, TV took 13 years. Internet, four years. Right down, even Facebook took two years. But smartphones, 50 million users within one year. The pace of change is absolutely phenomenal now. Absolutely phenomenal. One of the good things from our perspective is that people are using this to access insurance. This is a, a, a statistic from Google. 26% growth they have seen in internet searches for insurance from 2010 to 2011. Okay, so what that is this year, I don't know yet, but it's, certainly, it's almost certainly going to be larger. And that's new searches. On a rolling 90-day period, Google experienced 20% of their searches are brand new, never been searched for before. So there's going to be more searches for insurance and insurance-related activities such as claims and so on coming through on that, on, that, on that side. Consumers are really changing the way that they're dealing with, um, dealing with insurers. And good news is, here we are in the UK, we happen to be leading the world. We are the world's leading country for e-commerce. All right? 50% of people in this country have a smartphone that they can do all kinds of things through. And a large, as you can see some statistics there, a large number of households don't even bother having a landline anymore. They've probably got some kind of connection for their internet, but for a phone and for their smartphone usage and for their tablet usage and so on, they're just not using it anymore. And some recent surveys about how many... How important is this to people? Well, 33% of people said they'd rather, no, 70% of smartphone users would give up alcohol, and a third of those surveys said they'd rather give up sex. Well, God knows what that says about us, but there we go. And tablet usage. How long have tablets been out? They seem to be only out for five minutes, for, in, in, my, in my view of things, but th there's 10% of the UK population have got a tablet. Now, it happens, most of them happen to be over 50, a third of them, but that's probably because of the cost. And we all know about Moore's Law, that cost is going to come down, they're going to be far more widely used. Claims activities lend themselves to this sort of, this, this sort of usage, mobile and internet. It actually works very, very well. This is all about collaboration. It's collaborative and it's inclusive. And that's what's important about people who are using social and mobile media to conduct not just the trivial things like posting pictures up on Facebook and so on, but to conduct business. Definitely coming that way. Uh, business women and business men are consumers too. People will eventually, well they still do, but they will demand ever more the same levels of service and technology support at home, sorry, at, wor in, at work, as they do at home. They're going to want to come into the office and have the same kind of experience. Why? Because it works. It works extraordinarily well. The collaborative model embodied by social media in all its web and mobile incarnations has facilitated great change in speed, levels of intelligence, I don't mean intelligence of us, we haven't become more intelligent because we're using them, but I mean the levels of information and knowledge that we have about things that are going on. Massive increase in the levels of interactivity between people. And we all know we're, we're a social species. When interactivity goes up, things tend to get done. Interactivity has been massively increased. That also brings with it personal responsibility, which is probably a good thing because it means people are far more involved in the process of what they're doing. You don't just phone somebody else up to do it for you, buy something for you, go in a shop. You're intimately involved in the process, and that has a profound effect on the way consumers behave. My point is it will have a profound effect on the way businesses behave and people behave when they are sitting at work. Zuckerberg's here, you know, people will share twice as much information as they did the year before each year. But people like Zuckerberg probably had no idea how Facebook was going to be used. People who invented Twitter probably could not predict what it was going to be used for. And this is quite a change. This is something new. 
Inventors, when you're inventing you know, a coffee machine or a, a printing press or a weaving machine or a steam engine that pumps water, you've got a pretty good idea of how it's going to work. You invent a steam train, well, that's what's going to happen with it. You might say, well, Daimler Benz, Mr. Benz probably didn't have much idea about how, when he invented the, uh, the, the, the petrol engine, couldn't have predicted Formula One racing. But that happened a hell of a long way in the future. The creators of these, this kind of software, they, they create these things, you don't know how it's going to be used. It's the crowds, the consumers, who decide. They're the ones who invent how it's used. It's not so much the wisdom of crowds, it's the innovation of crowds. Now, um, so people could not, and there's, there's a, a massive spread. There's, the, the statistics there are mind-boggling. You know, nearly 900 million active users on Facebook. 70% of consumers use social media to get information on products. 16% have raised insurance matters. And boy, can they communicate very quickly. You make a mistake in uh, consumer, you know, in personal insurance. You know, you, you, in the past, you could tell six friends. Now you can tell 6,000. Well, the same thing's going to happen in business. If businesses don't get the uh, correct service, they are going to be telling their other businesses, their peers, uh, their parent companies, and so on, just as quickly. Very, very important that that happens. So we come with this thing called the claims ecosystem. Now, how can the industry capitalise on this revolution in communication and collaboration? For me, it's something that I would call the rise of the virtual claims team, which are all using this thing that we at Phineos call the claims ecosystem. Now, there are a whole range of parties involved in the progress of a successful claim. And unfortunately, they're also involved in the progress of unsuccessful claims. So, who does the claims system, whatever it is, serve? What it, typically, it serves the claims team, the claims handler, the people immediately around them. But there's a whole range of other people involved in that process who also need to do things and interact with each other. And if you're not careful, all those kind of interactions soon start to become more and more complicated. That kind of, and when there are interactions going on from person to person, not going through the claims team, then the claims system, the claims team, don't know about it. Things are going on that are not recorded in the claims system. And when they are recorded in the claims system, the poor old claims handler is becoming a bottleneck and can, can slow things down. But with this sort of thing, there's an immense latency of information in the system, and that can cause the problem of, you know, are, are, are we there yet? You know, what that poor risk manager who's waiting, for, being pressed by their board to find out where their claim is, what's happened to our claim? Well, I don't know, actually. Nobody's told me. I can't actually get into this thing here. The point is that each of the involved parties in this, put yourselves in their shoes, they think that they are the centre of the process. Well, of course, they are, as far as they're concerned. They are the centre of the process. So what we need to be able to do is to expand the claims system, move everybody outside it, so that it serves everybody. Not just everybody in the department, those people on the inner circle, but all those people outside as well. Why shouldn't they have their own viewpoint into the system? Put them there and allow them to be involved in this so that they, they are at the centre of the process as far as they're concerned. So give them the facility to cooperate, to actually add their part to what's going on. Give people direct access to what's necessary for them if everybody's being collaborative in the same way they are in, in, in the sort of social world, then you do have the opportunity to move things forward to everybody's best interest. Not just the insured, not just the claimant, not just the broker, not just the lawyer, not just the salvage expert and so on who need to do things, but to everybody. Everybody actually has a common interest in making this thing work properly. As long as at the centre you've got proper business information and so on coming out to the people who need it, then that sort of activity really should be available to everybody. You introduce collaboration and community interaction into your business processes, the same way they exist out in the, 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 the consumer world, between not just departments, but everybody. Everybody should feel they'll be able to, being able to contribute towards this thing. So what does that actually look like in practice? Well, here's the bit where it's going to be sort of a slight challenge. I'm going to take you into a new claims world, something that is actually happening now. Now, don't let the different line of business uh, confuse or fool you or put you off for any reason. The global, mobile, social, media-centric world provides new ways of doing things. It provides new ways of doing business as well as new ways of doing, what, as I said, all the trivial stuff like posting your holiday snaps and uh, forming a flash party or something or, uh, through the social media networks that you might do for your personal, <clears throat> in your personal life. Any business 
including what is done here in London, could be influenced by this way of doing things. So I offer this as a suggestion, nothing more. This is the sort of activity that's happening here. Now, this is a, this is a disability insurance, okay? So it's bodily injury. This is an individual, although it may well be a, have been insured through a big organization. This is work that's happening today, that we're doing today down in the Southern Hemisphere, okay? And as I said, different insurance lines may progress at different speeds, but at the end of the day, there happens to be a convergence in the way, way, way people do things. So what actually happens in here? This is like a Facebook type page. It's a social media page about somebody's personal plan. On that personal plan, they'll have things like here, like a summary of each plan phase. And they can click on there to view their associated goals. Their goals might be get back from hospital, achieve independent living, go back to part-time work, go back to full-time work, and so on. So they've got this kind of Facebook page, and they have this ability to click on things and record all their activities. The point is other people have access to this sort of page as well. They can view their goals, all right, get back home. Other people who are involved in this process, nurses, doctors, community support people, have access directly, not just through the claims handler, not just through the insurance company, directly to this to see what's going on, see the claimant's views, add information of their own. They can view their goals, objectives, and their outcomes. You've got different tabs on here. And if we just transfer to one of the other tabs, the actions tab, there's a whole set of things down here that need to be complete. Each action has an owner. Each owner has access either to the whole page or to the page that's relevant to them because you have to have privacy concerns here as well. They have access to what's going on. People have been given the authority and the responsibility of managing their own part in the process. And that's not just the insurance, insurer, the broker, the claimant, the loss adjuster, the separate claims handler, the uh, medical staff, salvage experts, engineers, who happens to be everybody has access to what, what's going on there. Now, in this particular one has a, a very much more social look about it, where you've got all these people posting here, will be looking up and saying, you know, I just looked on and seen that you've got a physiotherapy session next week. Make sure you tell me, let me know how it went. Um, my doctor might be saying, look, I, I understand you've been going for these sessions for too long. Why don't you, I think we should uh, change the tack here and introduce a different sort of service. People have got the option of looking at this You've got this whole page here. There is a community of support workers making this claim work and getting this claimant back to, back to full-time living, achieving their goals. Now, that's one specific type of insurance, one specific type of claim, which is re um, relevant to the individual. What we're talking about here in London, of course, are claims of you know, 225 million, where all sorts of complexities take place. But I think my point is, that because it's that complex, because you've got so many different people involved, this is actually, this sort of process is actually ideal. It actually works better than having everything go through one person, one claims handler, who might have a thousand claims to handle. Right? This is the sort of thing that gives everybody the ability to get involved in it. So if everyone's working together, which they should be, to achieve a common, mutually beneficial goal, well, you're going to get the results. How do you motivate them? Well, how do all those disparate parties? Well, simply serve. If you think about serving their individual and their group needs, then you've kind of solved that problem. Why else would somebody not get involved if their individual needs are not being met, if they don't have access to the things they require? This is about collaboration. It's about inclusivity. It's about sharing information, providing and receiving updates. Some people will be involved just as a read-only basis. Some people will actually be involved and have to add to the process going on. But if you give that sense of ownership to the whole set of parties involved in the claims process, then there is a good possibility, strong possibility there for introducing real innovation, which will take that claims process forward and take it to a place where it hasn't been before. Thank you. Just some food for thought.